Hey, this is Matt from the Man Cave. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. With your daily devotion for what? December the 19th, guys. Hope you're having an excellent day. Hey, I'm having an excellent Christmas season, but the person behind me is not. And you're like, Matt, what are you talking about? There's a lot of us that are having a totally awesome Christmas season, but there are some people during the season that are suffering greatly. Behind me, this lady, her car's getting repoed. She has a truck. Hey, sh tr spin it around, Tracy, real quick. See if you can just get a picture of the truck. Can you imagine it's the Christmas season, that's your only truck, and now it's getting repoed because you've lost your job and you can't make the payments on it. You know what I'm saying? Terrible. How awful is it for that person, guys? It's the Christmas season. You have one vehicle, okay? You lost your job and you can't make ends meet. You don't know what to do. You've begged, you've borrowed, you've stole, you've gone to the pawn shop, you've done everything that you know to do to try to save your car, your truck. You've called Ford Motor Company and you said, hey, listen, I'm behind payments. And they say this, we've already put three payments at the end of the loan. We're going to pick it up, okay? Then the repo man comes and now you still have, okay, obligations. You have rent, you have electricity, you have gas, you have phone, you have children you have all these things and it's Christmas how happy would you be honestly I'm just asking how happy would you be friends that is a reality for many people just because you're doing so well and I am doing so well it doesn't mean that everybody is if a person doesn't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ how well do you think their life can be I, I mean I'm just on top of everything else that happens in life it's gonna be awful Matt it is. When I go through Christmas, this season, I notice a lot of people, watch this, are so happy. But I always come across, and I truly believe God brings across certain individuals across my path who are hurting in the deepest way. Why is that? Because God wants me to minister to those individuals. Can I minister to everyone? On the man cave, yes, if they'll watch it, okay? But in life, when I'm at the grocery store, when I'm at Walmart, when I'm getting my tires changed, when I'm doing this or I'm doing that, okay? The people that God brings across my path, and I hear his still small voice speaking to me, and I see the need, and I can meet the need, I'm going to do it. I'm going to absolutely do it. Why? Because here's the thing. You are the hands and feet of Christ. Okay, it's one thing to celebrate Christmas, Emmanuel, Christ came. But it's a whole other thing to bring Christ to them. Oh, yeah. Hey, today we're going to be in Psalms 147, verse 3. Listen to this text. It says, God heals the brokenhearted, and he binds up their wounds. You are the hands and feet of Jesus. When God brings these people across your path, you need to minister to them. Look at, look at, look at. Is it financial every time? No. I find that more people need something other than financial assistance in life. Okay, that's very minimal how many people are hurting because they don't have enough money. There's more people in life who have gone through a messy divorce, who have lost a loved one, who has lost a child, okay, who have lost a job, who are just desolate, have no family, who just need a meal. They need someone to come along and do what? Love on them, show God's mercy, show God's grace, not judge them, not criticize them, not put them down, not ask questions. Well, you should have done this. Get out of my face, you hypocrite. Love. Matt, Matt, calm down. Okay, let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 4. Listen to God's word. God's word. Blessed are those who mourn. Why would God say that? For they shall be comforted. Meaning when we're crying out to God, he'll meet our needs. But again, a lot of people don't belong to God because of their own choices. So we have to come across their path or God's going to bring them across our path and we're going to help them. We're going to lift them up. You're going to be salt and light to a lost and dying world, okay? You're going to be the hands and feet of Jesus. I've sat with people who just needed someone to listen to them, okay, to help them to work through it mentally, okay? Over a 50 cent cup of coffee, come on, spring. Don't be so cheap, ink up. A dollar cup of coffee and someone wants to share what's going on in their life? Do you need to figure out their life? No, you can't. Only God can help them. But listen, you're just listening. You're helping them get what's going on in their life off their chest. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, he says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. I realize that God comforts people who call out to him. But some people don't know him. So what your job is when God, when God brings the people across your path to help them to cry out to God. 
You share your life. You share, hey, I've been where you're at. And friends, I have been there. Someone stole from me. I've lost my job. I've been penniless. I've been broke. I've been looking at a Christmas tree that I pulled out of the dumpster the day after Christmas just so I could have one in the house and didn't have anything under it. It had no lights. It's just a tree. But I worshipped. I've been kicked out of my house. Here's the thing. I've gone through the gamut. I've been in the valley. I've been in the storm. I've been in the fire. He's faithful. Did you hear what I said? He's always faithful. Okay? So friends, when these people, and here's the thing. Again, God's not asking you to help everybody. But there are those he will bring across your path this Christmas season that you, you, not someone else, don't pass the buck in the man cave, partner. We don't do that. You can minister to them. It may just be you. Look at men. It may just be you barbecuing hamburgers and putting one on a plate with a piece of tin foil around it, walking across the street, knocking on the door and say, hey, I just barbecued hamburgers for the family. I, I thought you might like one. They're world famous. Always put that. Always say that. They're world famous, okay? Because like, here's the thing. It's not just some crappy burger I made. It's world famous. Everyone raves about them. Friends, people need love. Do you understand that? There are people, okay, when we look at Christmases, for you and I, Christmas is wonderful because we're around friends and family. It just seems like a time of, of giving and a time of fellowship and fun. And, and I'm worshiping my Lord and I needed a Savior. And God gave me what I needed. I needed Christ. I needed Emmanuel. I needed that baby to grow up and be a man and be more man than I could ever be. I needed that. But as I've celebrated 20, 30, 40 perfect Christmases, there are those people out there that have celebrated just as many as me. But last year, their spouse died. Or their kid got in a car wreck. Or they lost their job, so they lost their home, so they lost their truck, they lost their car. What are you and I to do? You got to hear from God. God will tell you what to do. Guys, Christmas, you know what that means. Christmas. Christ, which is who? Jesus, the anointed one, the Lamb of God. Christ, Mass. What is Mass? Church. Bring the church to the person. Bring Christ to the church. And that's what it means. Christ, Mass. Like you went to Mass, like you were Catholic, but we go to what? Church. We fellowship at church. So why don't you bring the Christmas, Christ, okay, to the person? And, and, and how do I do that? You. Handing a hamburger to a person, telling them God loves them. That might be the difference. That might be the difference, okay, of them being defeated and them not going hungry for a day, okay? It could be a gift. It could be you pulling out your wallet. It could be you listening to someone. I don't know what it is, but I know this. I know this. The Holy Spirit will lead you to do the right thing. Okay? He's not going to leave you hanging. You're not going to feel inadequate. You're going to be God's hands. And when here's the thing, when you're using your hands as Christ, He leads and guides. Look at, look at, look at, look at. I know you're like Matt. You're being, you're coming down on us. I know, I know, I know. Look at, look at, look at. Pick one. That's, look at, look at. Matt in the man cave's giving you homework. How about just one person? Because a lot of you would shuck it off and not do anything because we're greedy, aren't we? It's all about our families. As long as my family and my kids have everything they need, I'm fine. I could care less about the neighbor. <laughs> Screw that guy. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't go to church. I invited him one time four years ago. And he, you know, at one time he was cutting the bushes and went into my side of the yard. Oh, wow. Let's just take an axe to that guy. Give me a break. Pick one guy out that's a total stranger and pick one person that you know and I want you to minister to them. That's your Christmas assignment. What are you talking about? You heard what I'm talking about. I want you to pick someone you absolutely don't know and I want you to bless their socks off. Okay? Why? Because God will bless your socks off. God will be indebted to no man. Okay? And it's Him doing it through you. Matt, don't yell at me. I'm not yelling. You've never even heard me yell, but I have. I'm not bragging, but I have yelled. But that's not yelling. That's passion. Okay? Look at, look at. Take a person that you know their need already. Try to help them. And you're like, and here's you and me. Here's you and me, intellectual. Well, if I help them, they're not very responsible. Who is? Are you kidding me? Who's perfectly responsible? Well, I think they're just going to do this. Here's the thing. You were obedient to Christ. Let me, God moves the hearts of kings and rulers. Look at, look at, try this on. Maybe your kindness and your love and your mercy and your grace to someone who doesn't deserve it will smash that heart and heart, okay? And, and give the access to Christ to come and start living inside of them. Oh, that's amazing how that works. Love breaks down all barriers, baby. Love breaks it down. Guys, can I share something with you? When in doubt, love. Look at, look at, what are you talking about? When in doubt, love. Well, man, when in doubt, love. 
What about that person that spit on me? When in doubt, love. Love your enemies. Why'd God say that? Because it smashes them to crap. They can't understand it. Somebody just stabbed you in the back, deceived you, lied to you, cheated, manipulated you, did you wrong, thought they got away with it, thought they pulled one over on you. Love them. Give them a hug. Give them a 20. Buy them lunch. Buy them a coffee. Share Christ. Oh my goodness. You will smash the devil. You will smash his head down because of Christ in you coming out to a lost and dying generation. That's what I'm talking about. Merry Christmas. I love you, brother. Even though you lied about me, stabbed me in the back and I lost my job because of you. Christ. Hey, Tracy says, you're being a little passionate and zealous. Drink some coffee, breathe in, breathe out. What am I asking you to do? We're in the man cave for a reason, are we not? I mean, do you not? We want to learn about God. I want to, am I perfect? No. Do I want to worship God? Yes. Do I want to make the right decisions? Yes. Do I want the blessings of Almighty God? Yes. Do I want to minister to people? Sometimes the answer is no. Because I'm greedy, I'm selfish. I'm not where I need to be with God. Would God want me to do that? Would God want me to minister? Yes. So that's why I've given you homework, okay? And you're like, okay. Uh, and, and you might think, well, uh, Matt, I, I'm down and out. I'm praying for you, partner. But can I ask you a question? Honestly, can I ask you a question? Uh, okay, you're down and out. Here, take the coffee, Tracy. Uh, let me ask you this. Are you as down and out as these people over here? Let me see if I can get a good picture of them. Let me see. Just a second, guys. Let me see if I can get a picture. Uh, okay, this is behind a freeway. I don't know if I can get that picture or not. Let me see if I can get that picture. Let me zoom in on them. Okay, there's people with families every night living out in... Tonight it's going to be 29 degrees. Okay, and um, this is where they were living right here. This is where they were living, but the cops kicked them out, and so they started making a place over there, so that will be filled with people tonight. And there's a place about, can I ask you a question? Can, can Matt ask you a question? Is, is your lot in life like theirs? Or are you, are you in, a, in an apartment or a house or living with your parents still? No, that's all I'm asking you. I mean, honestly, that's all I'm asking you right now. Uh, here's the thing. Guys, we're all suffering. Look at me, look at, look at me. I know you're hurting. It doesn't matter how bad you're hurting. We can all help someone. Does that make sense? I, I know a lot of you are suffering. I, I know a lot of you don't have what you need. You know what I'm asking? I'm asking someone in the man cave to help you. That's what I'm asking, okay? You can't give what you don't have, but I don't want you to sit there and, and just because you didn't get the 70 inch plasma this Christmas that you really, really wanted, to think your lot in life sucks, okay? That sucks. That person getting their car repoed, that sucks, okay? Me and you not wanting something bigger to replace something we already have, that doesn't suck, okay? At all. Sometimes, hey, you're like, Matt, where are you going? Uh, maybe we're a little selfish and greedy. I'm just saying, I'm just saying is that true I don't know if it's true only you know if it's true okay be content with your lot in life help as many people along the way that way when you get to the end of the road and God looks you in the blues and he says well done good faithful servant you know why he's saying it because if it was all about you I don't think you're going to hear it hey this is Matt from the man cave